This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of Rochester, New York, who belongs to a band called the Redbeard Samurai and the JB Dojo. I'm speaking to Blake Pattengale. Uh, Mr. G- Pattengale, how you doing today? I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Thanks Thank you. Me. Thank you, man. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. You, s- you sent me some information. Uh, you have a new... Your latest single out is called Rain Fall Down. Uh, we're going to get into that in just a little bit. But tell me about the uh, Redbeard Samurai and the JB Dojo. Yeah, Redbeard Samurai uh, and the JB Dojo is a project that I've been kind of spearheading for like probably four or five years now. Um, I started doing it when I was at uh, Eastman School of Music, which is in Rochester, New York, where I'm located. And um, initially, I was working with a lot of uh, Eastman students uh, at the time who are now alumni. And yeah, so it's kind of become a mix of that. And um, I also work with a, like a wedding company that does a bunch of different like wedding performances and things like that. So a lot of the people um, that I'm working with now are a mix of like Rochester um, Eastman alumni and then upstate New York kind of like uh, working like wedding band musicians and other people who are kind of like professional players in the area. Um, so it's, it's a, been a really fun, almost like collective type thing where, you know, different people are coming and going depending on what gigs they're available to do and, and different things like that. So it's kind of become like a, a pretty big family, you know, of people uh, that are doing it. So it's fun. Okay. And so uh, explain the name to me. Uh, Red Beer Samurai and the JB Eljo. That's quite cool. a name. That's a good question. Okay. So, um, yeah, for Redbeard Samurai is kind of what I consider to be my stage name as like a, a solo performer. Um, so, yeah, I work with different groups beyond this project, and I still kind of go as that name, you know, Redbeard Samurai, which um, I have a red beard. And then uh, I, uh, yeah, I really uh, was going through and kind of pondering different stuff, and I've always been really fascinated with uh like Japanese culture and samurai and things like that and I I was initially doing a lot more um, hip-hop type stuff and I was really into like people like MF Doom or like Thundercats or these kind of like stage names that are larger than life and in some ways almost like comic book or like animation type-esque you know what I mean like um, so that was that was a big inspiration for me there on that name and then the JB Dojo really comes down to like the JB is my first name is Jonathan so Jonathan Blake um, is like my name, but also paying homage to James Brown and the JBs, of course, um, being like a really big influence for me. Um, James Brown, I was like, um, yeah, the JB Dojo just seems fitting, you know, um, and Dojo going with like the whole samurai thing and everything. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, quite clever. It seemed like you took some thought. <laughs> I'm coming up yeah. with that. <laughs> I know that was that like that a name. lot, right? <laughs> right? That's okay. So, uh, you guys are a nine piece band. Yeah, okay. yeah. We usually try to do it um, big, you know, so it's fun. <laughs> okay. Now, how do you, how did you guys? Are you guys all former classmates, or how did you all get together? Well, like I said, it kind of depends on on the show. Like sometimes it's kind of like a rotating cast of people, almost. You know what I mean? Who are coming coming in and out of this group? Um, some people like people's lives all change. You know, like there's for example, there's some people who play in the band who I still live in Rochester, but. People are moving to like New York City or doing different things like that or going to different places. So depending on where we're at, it's kind of like we've we've been playing with so many people at this point that like um, the group kind of stretches out. So if we're going to New York City, there's almost like four or five different people there that we'll try to pick up with there and do the gig so that we don't have to have so many people travel because, you know, doing this music thing is like it's really expensive. Um, but um, yeah, so... Yeah, it's, it's basically a mix yeah, of like people I went to Eastman with and um, Eastman School of Music in Rochester and um, different people that I've just kind of met and been working with in like the upstate New York scene and throughout, you know what I mean? So I, I play with different people from Syracuse and Buffalo and Rochester and like that kind of whole thing. So it, and really just kind of 
feel it out. So it's, it's kind of fun. It keeps the energy really fresh with the group all the time. You know what I mean? Because we're constantly bringing in new people. There's a lot of impro improvisation at the live show. So that's also really fun too, because it's like you get to hear, you know, different people and like there might be a different sax player one night and they have a completely different take on a song, you know? So it's, it's really fun for that. Okay. So it sounds like a more of a kind of an ensemble, just fit in pieces here and there, wherever you are. Yeah, like a collective, yeah. Okay. Now, um, Rainfall Down, is that your first uh, single, or uh, how did that come about? Um, well, it's not our first single. We actually uh, released an album in May um, that was much more, like, hip-hop, like, oriented, and, like, basically, I was trying to do more, like, soul and like my I went to Eastman for jazz guitar so I obviously play a lot of jazz and do stuff like that too um so I was trying to kind of mix those references and and then make it like hip-hop you know and like put those things in and, and then flip samples and stuff and make it more like hip-hop but um the, after releasing that album and like the feedback I got on it I was really wanting to kind of um yeah shift to more of a soul vibe and more just like fun good Vibes, you know what I mean? That like feel good and have people just having fun. Because my main goal with the project from the beginning has been like to just let people give give people music if they're at like uh, a party or at like a club or something or a bar or whatever to just cut loose to and have a good time to. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, this this single is not really like a cut loose kind of tune, but it's definitely a fun a fun B side to have. So. Yeah, this is something that I'm, I'm gearing up to release another album, like hopefully sometime this year. And uh, yeah, this is definitely the first single for that whole thing. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah, it's been it's been a fun process and like fun to get together and, and record that with the, the people really quick. You know, so. Okay, so you said, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Rainfall Down is part of the upcoming album. Yeah. Okay, so you said you just yeah. released, a, released an album in May. Is that May 20, 2019? Yes. Okay, and so did you? What happened to that album that you're coming back so quickly with a with another album? Did well, you? the the thing with that album was that like I had spent a lot of my time in school, kind of working on it and perfecting it, and I just spent like a lot of time making it. Like I spent like maybe three or four years just in production like trying to make this album just like something crazy and I really um like I think in many ways went too far in on it in the production side I learned a lot during the whole time and was like growing the whole time but I'm I feel like I learned so much in that process that I wanted to kind of like a lot of the songs I had written were like three or four years old when I put them out so for me in going from being like I released it when I was I guess 25 and I started writing it when I was like 21 so that's like a pretty different kind of person you know what I mean from those years to those years so I wanted to kind of get music out that was like a bit more of what I was feeling now as opposed to what I was feeling like four or five years ago and I didn't want to take that amount of time again I wanted to just get on it and be grinding to like I had a lot of music I was already sitting on you know because I had been writing for that time while I was still working on those first songs so that's kind of why I'm like, I'm just trying to catch up on my backlog of songs at this point, you know, I'm like, I'm still writing new stuff too. And like, I just wrote a song the other day that I'm like, okay, I want to get this one recorded and try to get it on too. But yeah, that's, that's the main thing. I just want to get more out, you know, say more things. So. Okay. And um, when do you anticipate that new album uh, coming out? Um, I honestly don't know right now. I mean, that's that's a hard thing to say, but um, I'm I've been kind of grinding on it every day. We did it. Um, I did a bunch of sessions in February. I was like the featured artist for this studio in Rochester called Green Room Audio. Shout out. Um, and the uh, yeah, the, I was their featured artist for the month of February. So it was really nice to kind of have that time to go in and get a bunch of sessions together. And I worked with a lot of different Eastman alumni that I know, like for that are string players and woodwind players and different rhythm sections and stuff like that. There's some more jazz elements on it and some more soul elements on it and funk and all that kind of stuff just kind of coming together and, and blending, you know, and even some hip hop as well. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. It's okay, uh, sounds good. Um, so back to uh rainfall down tell me about that particular track um yeah rainfall down was a track that i um i live really close to this park in 
Rochester called Highland Park. And uh, I, I basically just walk to that park pretty often. And um, when the weather is nice and this was in the fall, I had written this song. And basically I've been going there every day and just kind of like trying to meditate and and just go for a nice walk. I, I took this class at one point where I was reading or we had read different articles that different creatives in the past like Mozart and Bach and all these guys like all went for like three hour walks after lunch and I was like wow that's pretty dope like so I was like maybe if I do this you know like do what they did you know um so yeah I was trying to kind of encapsulate that part of the creative process or just giving myself time and and uh I would sometimes bring a notebook but this was a day that like I just didn't bring a notebook and and on my way back home uh, from the park it's like started raining and I had been thinking about this like uh, ex-girlfriend of mine you know and the the rain started falling and I was like it, the song kind of came together and I started just kind of singing it and a lot of times I like kind of judge my melodies if I'm just hearing something but this time it was a nice time where I didn't do that and uh, and yeah I, I got home and just sat down at the piano and just kind of plucked it out and the song wrote itself pretty quickly after that like basically from the time I got home it was just like it's nice when you write them like that. Sometimes, you know, I grind on a song and just keep being like, what's the right word here, this or that? And this one just kind of was like, click, done, you know, um, which is a good feeling. And I was like, I have a really good feeling about this song. So, um, yeah, so I was I was excited. And when, and when we've been doing stuff, we had that NPR Tiny Desk thing coming up, you know, that was like the, the reason we did this live video. And uh, I, we were all like, you know, what song can we do? We have a bunch of really high energy stuff that we're kind of spinning on. And uh, I was like, you know what? Like, I think a lot of people who are our fans currently kind of see that side of us a lot. So let's show them like kind of the softer side and something that's a little bit more reserved and more of a B side. So yeah. Okay. Well, I like it. I think it's. I think it's. A, I think it's a great song. We're gonna uh, play it here in a little bit. Now, um, you mentioned that you were influenced by Soul and James Brown. What other artists um, inspired you, or did you uh, did you like growing up? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, I mean, that's a hard and long question to answer, but I'll try to be brief. I feel like in many ways I've, I've gone through like so many different um, uh, genres, you know, and just been so interested in different things at different times that like there was a time when I was in high school, I was super into rock music and like Led Zeppelin and Cream and CCR and, you know, these kinds of bands and those kinds of things and then I was also listening to soul and funk at that time and and then I went to college for jazz you know so I was listening to a lot of jazz then I discovered a lot of hip-hop then too like underground hip-hop especially like shout out MF Doom, Deltron 3030 these kind of like more underground hip-hop people that I think um obviously in their underground circles are, are legends but um that in many ways I I just kept searching you know because I was I was wanting to find different stuff and then um, I mean, I, I had heard about James Brown a lot, of course, but, um, and, and everybody knows some of James Brown's hits, you know, like, uh, I feel good. I do that song at least 40 to 50 times a year at weddings, you know, like it's a lot, it's a popular song. Um, but when I started really checking out James Brown's catalog a little bit more, I was like, oh my God, like this guy is the man. And then from there I was, I, yeah. Let's just take a pause there, take a breath, and then, because it's James Brown. I mean, it's just like, James Brown, for me, I'm, I'm like, do a lot of fronting with the band, you know, and I've, I've been doing live performances and, and kind of gearing up my thing as a front man, and so to see James Brown, just, it's like, oh, shit, like, that is, can I swear, is that bad? Um, it's fine. Anyway, it's like, I was, you know, it's just James Brown, and, and like, so then from there, you know, I was listening to, like, Marvin Gaye is a is another classic guy, and like Stevie Wonder, of course, um, Patti LaBelle, like Redbone, just a bunch of like just a bunch of different stuff. Just trying to go through and find all these hits, like and uh, and yeah, it's just so fun. Like uh, I have like a whole playlist that I have now that's just like called album inspiration, and it's a it's a mix of different things that, but it's mainly soul music because I um oh let's get P Funk in there, Cool and the Gang in there. There we go. Um, but like the, those those songs for me, like when I listen to them, it's like, you know, there there's different songs. And this is one of the Rainfall Down is one of those songs where it kind of gets you through something that you're going through, you know, and it helps you kind of deal with something or takes you to some emotional place, you know. And I feel like 
uh, some soul music is like that, especially the B-sides and that kind of thing. You know, it helps with that kind of stuff. But there's a lot of soul music that, and I think the majority of the vibe is that like, there, there is absolutely nothing wrong and it's just a complete celebration. You know, it just feels like so good. It just feels good. Like that's all it is and it feels good. And then, and so when I'm thinking about like, as an artist, you know, there's all these different genres I can pull from and jazz and this and that and hip hop and all this kind of stuff. The, the like the vibe that you give the audience when you're playing soul music of just like everything is cool no one is judging you and we're just going to cut loose and have a really good time and this is music that you can listen to to do that it was like i'm like i was like i found it you know what i mean like i found what <laughs> is like, the, the thing that we do you know okay. so yeah that's my little soul music hey uh yeah. Very well said, I must say. Like, um, <laughs> so right now we're gonna we're gonna pause and we're going to uh, listen to Rainfall Down. This is a uh, red he- red beer samurai and the JB Dojo with Rainfall Down. Let the rain 
episode after this message. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. All right, and we're back. Uh, thank you, Blake. That was, a, that was a great song. It's sort of soothing, um, but I like I like the whole song and the, and the background singers. Uh, I like it. I think people will like it as well. Now, that's the song. So um, can you tell us a little bit more about the upcoming album? Yeah, the uh, the upcoming album will feature that track. Um, actually, this is a, a live version of the track that we did for uh, the NPR Tiny Desk Contest. And uh, the upcoming track that we'll have on the album will be a completely different um, arrangement of the track with like, strings and other, you know, kind of more just bigger, better uh, kind of vibe with the production. So I'm excited to, to have this kind of teaser. That's why I wanted to make sure I put like live if you if you check it out on Spotify or Apple Music or something, you know, so that like when we put out the, the studio version of it, it'll have a, a slightly different thing. So hopefully two different, slightly different energies, you know, with the same same track. But um, yeah, the upcoming album is something that uh, I, I was kind of already concepting when we finished this last one in May and released it. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited about it. It's it's featuring, I think, a, a, a real uh, evolution in my in my music and songwriting, where it's uh, it's it's just showing so many different influences throughout. You know, the a good example is uh, this this suite that we've been working on, which is like. Um, it's called the Voodoo Suite, and it's. Uh, I'll, I'll be sure to send it to you when we uh, when we release it. But um, okay. but uh, yeah, it's it features like uh, my inspiration for it was kind of like uh, the end of the Beatles, like Abbey Road album. You know, is what I always reference people where where each song just kind of is running into the next one. Or um, I mean, there's tons of albums that have that kind of feeling to them. But I just I love when when the music just kind of feels like it keeps going. It's not just like those like pop albums you know where it's like here's single one and then it stops and then here's single two you know it's really like an album and not a, a, a series of singles back up next to each other um so that was the kind of vibe with this it, the the first one is kind of like a uh, more relaxed like jazz kind of thing and i brought in like a jazz rhythm section to play on that and a bunch of the jazz musicians I know, so I wanted to kind of get that that atmosphere in it. And I've, I've just been uh, the next one is more of like a like funky, almost like disco esque kind of tune that features a bunch of different stuff and has a really ambient beginning. And it's kind of upbeat, and then it just stops abruptly and drops into like this really slow, almost like Benny and the Jets like thing that I'm rapping over, you know. And it, that's a fun one. And then. Uh, it it kind of has this symphonic interlude in it that is a whole other vibe, you know. It's just it's a whole like myriad of different influences just coming together, and and I'm trying to show you kind of like that that world of of the the split back and forth and back and forth between different timbres and stuff. Like one of my big influences also is uh, the Gorillas, especially the album Plastic Beach, just because uh, the the thing I love about them is that like you'll, they'll start out something with classical instruments and like these really um, organic like natural timbres and and then eventually throughout the song it will it will evolve into being like an electronic sounding song and have like all these you know modern instruments or like electronic keyboards and synths and that kind of thing in it and I just love the that mixing of worlds you know what I mean because I've, I've been kind of on both sides of it you know going to Eastman and, and, and being around classical musicians and jazz musicians who are playing all this really rich beautiful music and then wanting to kind of take that and give it an audience where it's like people who are listening and tuned into pop music and aren't necessarily listening to like Haydn's Fifth Symphony or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, like giving them a, a chance to hear the, these wonderful players, you know, and, and to, to be inspired by them. So a lot of stuff too that, uh, that may be featured on the album is um, is just sessions I've been doing. I've been trying to, to do a lot more sessions with people, just like meeting people, having recording equipment with me and being like, hey, you're a really talented person, like, let's get together and make something, you know, and, and just see what comes out. I have, like, some lyrics I've written. What can we do with this, you know? And some of the, some of the stuff that we that will be on the album is stuff like that where I've, I've written with other people. Um, like, Abby Kelso is a vocalist out of uh, L.A. right now who I did a track with. She's She kind of goes back and forth between Rochester and L.A. So we got to work together on a track that's called uh, Music Set You Free that'll be coming out on that album and it's uh, just a real like just stank 
like spanky, <laughs> slow, like D'Angelo s, you know, just like funk on it. So I'm uh I'm excited. Yeah, I'm just, I'm so excited because it's like I think a a lot of the music that we did on the first album was music that I had kind of self produced by myself, you know, and uh, and it was, it was good in its own way. But this is much more like. Uh, I think real live, you know, seeing like hearing musicians that have been playing together for a long time and play together live all the time, playing together and coming together on something that, um, yeah, I hope I hope people will really dig. You know, so. Well, it sounds uh, it sounds pretty exciting. I must admit, I must admit. Um, now, the uh, the fact that we're into this uh, pandemic has that influenced the maybe the release date or the stuff you want to do. Uh, coming up with this new album yeah definitely i mean i uh i, I think a lot of the musicians around here I, I think i can speak for them in the upstate new york scene where it's like and, and most musicians it's like we all um get paid from doing performances a, a lot of us you know and i've been kind of performing professionally since i was like 16 i'm 26 now so i've, I've been making kind of a, a makeshift career out of it you know so um yeah this is definitely starting to pick up into where you know it's getting to be warmer there's more gigs available and stuff like that um and yeah it's definitely a hard hit financially and also um yeah just kind of a bummer you know uh like creatively to not be able to get with people it's definitely had a i think had a huge shift on um yeah just people's work like what what they can do personally i i'm just trying i'm trying to just grind on different stuff like hitting up different press for like this to happen you know and stuff like that that was something that like for me is something i wanted to focus on that i felt like i never had time for and so many of the musicians i know are of the mindset that like you know i want the music to speak for itself and i don't want to have to reach out for that they just want to focus on the music which i totally understand and i wish i could do as well but um but yeah it's given me time to you know hit up different press outlets and uh, about the and really take some time with the rainfall down release and uh and work on it mix and master it and that kind of thing and um work on new this upcoming album you know it's been it's been really a good time to kind of get grounded and just really got kind of i'm trying to get tunnel vision for like when this ends you know trying to get the band out playing bigger shows like doing bigger things and having an album behind us that can hopefully uh yeah inspire people and captivate them i'm that's that's been my goal is just kind of keep looking for the light at the end of the tunnel and just keep grinding for that day to come but it's definitely a it's definitely a hard hit you know uh yeah, just to, to not see and, and be able to play with your, your musician friends. I'm lucky that the, the keyboard player in the band is my roommate. So we've been able to kind of hang out and we've been playing jazz together every day and they're playing different songs together and stuff. And that's been really like good, a good release, you know, like we didn't do it. We, we have a couple regular gigs that we play together all the time on. And so when it first hit, we just kind of weren't playing together because we normally just, we have to play together by obligation all the time. So playing at the house is not something we do all the time but we finally uh, like two or three weeks in we were like you know let's you, got, you want to just play a tune or something real quick and then we we had so much energy like in us like musically that we needed to get out it was just like it was it was really uh it was really a lot we both kind of were like wow that was we needed that we both needed that you know so i think yeah as a as a front man it's uh yeah i'm i'm like slowly withering my energy you know because like i get energy from the performances and from the audiences so i'm really looking forward to getting back to that are you um are you totally an independent artist or are you signed with a label or yeah i'm an independent artist right now um i'm not I'm not saying i'm not looking for a label shout out labels um but uh <laughs> but yeah uh, we're an independent group right now okay so um did you say you're also going to do um, videos to support the album too or is that in the plan um, that is definitely something in the plan. Like I, um, I'm definitely trying to, to find different videographers who are, are interested and excited about doing this kind of stuff. A lot of videographers, I mean, as a musician with a musician's budget, um, sometimes that's kind of limiting with the video work you want to get done. But, um, but yeah, I have like a lot of different video ideas for this stuff. I'd love to do, um, I don't want to speak too soon on this stuff, but I'd love to do like uh, an, a video that was almost like several different music videos in one, you know, for the whole suite of that, that voodoo suite I was talking about, where it's like two or three different songs all back to back to back. Like have it be like one nine minute music video that's actually several different music videos together. I was really inspired by um, 
TR Wax Whack World, if you ever saw that, like it's basically like a, a 24 minute video that's a whole album, but each song is one minute. Mm. And and it's a 24 minute video where the, the music video changes like every minute, you know, she'll walk into another room and have a new costume on and do different stuff. And I'm like, I was like, dang, tear wag is like, I'm hard <laughs> with this kind of stuff. So yeah, I definitely, I love music videos. I'm, I was as a kid, so inspired by music videos. And um, that's definitely something that I want to keep doing. And I want to keep showing, I want to show people what we do, you know what I mean? More than uh, just having them hear the audio. I want to like, create a world where people can get immersed in it. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, this Corona thing got everybody kind of, you know, three or four steps behind. But yeah, hopefully, um, you know, this pandemic will be over hopefully soon and get out there and support this new project. Um, So you got the upcoming uh, album. Tell us a little bit more about uh, Rochester, uh, Rochester. Um, yeah. Is it a big music scene? It seems like it's a college town, but I'm not sure. Yeah, well, I mean, Rochester um, definitely has it has RIT, which is the Rochester Institute of Technology. It has Eastman. It has Monroe Community College. It has Nazareth College. It has a couple of different colleges in town, and that, that's definitely a. When I came in, that was how I was, you know, first introduced to Rochester and stuff. And I'd actually come from Montreal, which is a much bigger um, scene and just city overall, you know. So initially coming to Rochester, it felt like I was kind of coming to a smaller town and I was a little disappointed. Um, But, you know, upon finding the scene and finding different people, like Rochester scene really has a lot to offer. It has um, a bunch of great musicians and talent that are working here, you know, great um, audio music engineers and videographers and just all kinds of people who are creatives working here. I think it's uh, it's got a lot to offer in that, like, just like the cost of living here is way cheaper that, than almost, I feel like, anywhere else. Like, all my friends live in different places like L.A., New York, you know, all those places. And I'm, I'm trying to eventually get there. Um, but, yeah, for now, it's been, it's been really amazing because, like, just with the cost of living i've been able to afford to kind of invest in my craft and invest in my art and the production cost and getting the equipment that i need to make this kind of stuff happen you know whereas if i was and also to have the time you know like that's a that's a really important thing too like i i'm really fortunate in that like i can and i think a lot of musicians here can afford to to be musicians here you know like they don't have to do another day gig or the, or do this or that like they're they're really just playing music full time and, and making money at it you know so that's that's a really fortunate thing in Rochester um but yeah there's a lot of culture here there's a lot of art here um yeah it's really a good scene and especially connected to like the buffalo scene also a notable scene in the Syracuse scene you know those are both like an hour and a half away from Rochester so I get out and play in those places all the time or like it's really close to the Finger Lakes which is like a really gorgeous lake area i do gigs there all the time there's sometimes you know where you just look out and you're like playing like some awesome place with this gorgeous landscape you know and you're like wow this is this ain't bad you know i'm not i'm not complaining too much so um it's definitely cool i'm i'm excited i feel like i've kind of uh i've been here for probably like five or six years now and i, I when i first came i was no one had known who i was and i just feel like we've, we've uh, as a group kind of established uh, a, a small presence in rochester so it feels good yeah okay so um rainfall down how has that been received um since it's been since it's been released yeah it's it's the reception has been really good and really positive i've been really excited like uh we've we've hit up a bunch of different press outlets and Many of them, you know, it's a really uh, tough world to even get any press because everybody's looking for something so specific. But even even in the world of getting like rejected by press, all the all the things that they're saying are like really love the vibe, like such a chill vibe. I really like this tune. It just didn't like they they point out like one small aspect, you know. And I'm like, wow, that's it. I've I've submitted to press before and and it's much better, you know, this time. So um, that's been good. Uh, we've gotten on the you on the youtube video itself we're at somewhere around like twelve thousand views right now which is really exciting and definitely uh, our best video uh yet in terms of views and i've it's it's been cool like i have different comments on it from different 
languages, you know, that's something I've never experienced where like someone commented and I put it in Google Translate and it was like Japanese and I was like, okay, cool. That's really exciting, you know, to think that like someone else in another part of the world is like hearing this tune and getting something out of it that's positive and not enough to, you know, comment on it and like it and stuff. So it's been really good. We have some um, different, some, uh, my, my biggest thing, of course, is my peers m musically. Um, getting i mean obviously i love when everybody uh likes it but i'm i'm everybody's got their ear to the ground for what their musician friends think you know it's been really nice because uh some of my different musicians friends have been reposting it um you know when it first came out and then some of them have been reposting it recently like this song has been stuck in my head for a week so i thought i should repost it again you know um and i was like wow that's really awesome to think you know that like you you know you have something that's really captivating and, and that people are enjoying so um, that's kind of been my goal the whole, you know, the whole time is just to have people, um, yeah, like be able to really enjoy the music. I don't really, I, I, there's plenty of music that I like that it, I think is somewhat polarizing, you know, um, and takes a, a really firm stance on something that not everyone agree with. And I think I, I love that, but, um, but for the music I'm trying to create, I want it to be stuff that like everybody can get behind and, and really can touch like any, anybody, you know, whether it's like a little kid or like my grandma or, you know what I mean? Like I want them to all be able to enjoy it some way. So yeah, it's, it's been, it's been, I think received pretty well. I'm really pleased with it. Yeah. Okay. And where can, where can people purchase on your music? Yeah. Um, well, we, ha we have it on, I think most platforms. So um, I use Spotify. You can check it out on Spotify. You can uh, check it out on Apple Music. I think it's on Tidal as well. And mo most places where, you're, where you can find music, we, we have it uploaded. Um, the thing I like to do, of course, is um, I have it on Instagram. So on Instagram stories, you know, you can go and, and add it and do some kind of like sad boy type thing with the, the song playing. Or if it's raining, you know, you can post it. I did that. It was snowing in Rochester the other day. And I was like, what the heck? So I, I posted it and, you know, it's, it's uh, with the rainfall down music. That's like my favorite thing to do <laughs> with music for some reason. But, but yeah, I think you can get it on like most streaming platforms. We're, we're on Spotify. We're, uh, I'm making a playlist soon. So be sure to check that out. I have like had everybody in the group or all kinds of members in the, that I played in the group just send me 10 of their favorite songs. And I'm going to piece those together with different, you know, Red Beard Samurai tracks kind of sprinkled in there. Um, but it's, it's been really cool because there's so many, everybody's so musical in their own way and has different influences, you know, whether it's like drummers coming from the gospel shop and they're, they're commenting, like those kind of things. So I'm excited to release that. So if you're, if you're following us on Spotify, be, be sure to look for that. Okay. Fantastic. And I'm assuming, yeah, you're on all the uh, social media sites as well. Yeah, um, we don't, we don't have a Twitter. That's the only thing we No Twitter. Have. You hear that folks? No Twitter. No Twitter. <laughs> I know I've never no one I don't know who does that but when where they do it but I've no one that I've known does that like I, I've never known a person in my life that I've met in real life who's like yeah Twitter like I've never never met them so yeah it's one of those things I guess <laughs> okay well we'll have uh, we'll have notes on uh, our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com that's also in the show notes of uh, this video on YouTube at Bring Back Soul Music TV. All right, Blake. Well, anything else you want to add before we uh, call it a day here? No, thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, if you're if you're listening to this, thank you so much for for taking the time to listen to this. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, Blake. I appreciate your time, sir. Um, uh, and we have been trading emails for a while, so I'm glad we finally got it together. Thanks again for being on the show. And that's Blake Pattendale, aka Redbeard Samurai on the Bring Back Soul Music podcast, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Blake Pattengale, a.k.a. Redbeard Samurai, and a member of the group, the JB Dojo. Uh, you can find out more about Redbeard Samurai on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com, where we'll have all the links to uh, Redbeard's music. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. That's our show for today. 
I'm Todd Woodson. See you next week.